Beck and the Hell Spawn by Loki Striker is a survivor's like for Pico 8. Let's give it a look. Welcome to Pico Playtime, the video series where I play through some cool Pico 8 games to show two lovely people. Today's game is called Beckon the Hellspawn, and it's by the developer called Loki Striker. And oh, I do like the music in this game. I like the pulse on the title screen as well. Very cool. Okay, let's call up some information about the game so I can tell you about this lovely game. Beck and the Hellspawn is a survivor's like. That means it's like the game Vampire Survivors, which you may have heard of. It was the big game last year, the big indie game last year. Beck and the Hellspawn is similar to that. If you like Vampire Survivors, you will like this. If you've never played some Vampire Survivors before, play this first, and then you might think, oh, actually, that sounds really cool. Let's talk about the game then. So, if I start the game, that would help, wouldn't it? Let's get focus first. Um, before we do start, you can play this with a mouse or on the keyboard. I'm playing it with a controller because that's just how I do things. So, we have different characters to pick. We have got the Apprentice, Purifier, Stormcaller, Possessed, Moonkin. That's it. So that's, what, five characters? I didn't count that. Um, each character has a different starting weapon. Um, you can quite... I wouldn't say quite easily. It feels like you can get most of the weapons in the game, depending on what you select. Um, obviously, the same, the same kind of strategies which work in Vampire Survivors are going to work in this game. As you may have noticed, there is a rather nice low colour style to the graphics. Everything is nicely animated as well. Um, the controls are very simple. You move around, and then when you level up, um, you can select an upgrade. And that's it. Very simple controls, very much like Vampire Survivors. Um, let's read the, um, what do you call it, the description, the premise. Survive against hordes of relentless creatures by using your arcane powers to defeat them. Gather their essence, those are like the level up crystals, and use it to increase your magical prowess. Use the beacons, lure them and defeat them, but be warned, the more time passes, the stronger they get. Your mission, survive until it arrives. When it arrives, destroy it. Uh, don't worry, we don't have to fight Pennywise the Clown, or I don't think we do. Um, this game must have an end boss. I've never reached the end boss. There you go, spoiler. Or is that not a spoiler? I don't know. Anyway, let's get started. So, I like the idea of the Stormcaller. The Stormcaller has the lightning weapon, which I like. So yeah, when we're in the game, um, it's like Vampire Survivors. We have hordes of enemies that wander towards us and um, we just passively attack them. All we need to do is move around. You could call this style of game kiting the game, because that's what you have to do. You have to kite all the enemies. When you level up, and you get lots of level ups at the start, they will get further and further away from each other the further you get into the game. Um, when you level up, you get to either choose to upgrade an existing power that you've got, or choose a new power, and the skill of the game is picking a good build. Um, you could do that through trial and error, or you could find out from someone what the correct build is. Um, it's much more fun to play it through trial and error. I like upgrading the lightning spell. That's why I picked this character. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to upgrade my lightning spell. And now you'll see it's slightly better. This lightning skill does so much damage. That's why I like it. Um, all the weapons in this game feel very overpowered which is nice and satisfying. Um, compared to kind of Vampire Survivors, compared to other games in this kind of genre, it's nice to have very powerful feeling weapons. Uh, the, last game like, the last game like this that I played on the channel was Bun's Bunny Survivor. Um, go and check that game out, that's a really cool game as well if you like this style of game. Um, this one's doing something a little bit different though, which is um, why I wanted to highlight it to you. So. Rather pointlessly, I've upgraded my lightning skill again, doing even more damage. One-shotting all these hapless little slime things. Um, as we um, progress, you can see the uh, powers get much more upgraded. 
and more powerful. Um, but the enemies get stronger as well and more numerous. Now, an interesting thing which you can do, I'm going to get a new weapon, I'm going to get the magic bolt. These are the beacons. Um, if you hang around these beacons, charging them up thusly, um, when it um, kind of finishes charging up, it does that, increases the doom. Um, yes, this is like playing Arkham Horror, isn't it? Um, yes, it increases the doom, so there are more dooms. Doom 2, Hell on Earth. And um, that means more enemies are going to appear, which uh, makes the game harder, but kind of moves you through the game quicker. So um, this is a kind of an interesting way of doing things, a kind of risk and reward kind of thing going on there. Um, I want to show you as much of the game as I can, so I'm going to be trying to hurry things along. If you want to play through the game methodically and maybe get to the end, maybe getting these beacons isn't the best strategy to begin with. I'm not sure exactly how it works. There's, there's probably going to be some sort of trade-off there, isn't there? Who knows? I want more attacks. Um, do you know what? I'm going to get a new attack so I can show you some of the more interesting attacks. Um, if you've played Vampire Survivors, some of these attacks will look very familiar. I've got the kind of the wand attack, which fires at nearby enemies. I've got the um, spinning sword attack, kind of like the um, crucifix attack on Castlevania. Um, and I've also got the lightning ring spell, which is cool. Um, there are also defensive upgrades. Um, I'm not entirely sure what iframes does. I think when you take a hit, I'm guessing you have some iframes then. I've never picked this upgrade, so there we go. I've picked that upgrade. I guess we'll find out what that does. Now let's deliberately take a hit and see what happens. Didn't notice anything then. It'll be doing something in the background, I'm sure. Uh, let's get something more interesting. So, we can increase the frequency of our lightning. That sounds good. Or, we can increase the radius for our XP pickup ability. The um, little gems that you see on the floor that we collect, that's our XP. I'm just explaining the concept of Vampire Survivors here, aren't I? Um, I'm sure you get the idea. It's like that. <laughs> Ooh, armor. Let's just get all the upgrades. Let's just get every single power unlocked and just see what happens. I'm sure that will um, be a foolish thing to do. Now, I'm wondering if the characters, they have a different, each have a different starting weapon. I have a suspicion that they actually might use weapons differently. Um, I'll try one of the other characters when I inevitably die on this run and kind of hopefully be able to show you what I mean. Um, let's see if I can get... Probably shouldn't have got the radius upgrade. Let's see if I can get the orbiting attack. That's like the, the Bible attack on vampire survivors. Whatever that's called. Is it just called Bible? It's been a while since I've played it. The um, beacon we're using to upgrade the level of um, the enemies. You can see things are starting to get a little bit busier now. Uh, let's choose something then, so speed of the wand attack, the size of our sword attack, or I'm guessing that's movement speed. Let's get that. Yeah, that's definitely movement speed, I'm moving a lot faster now. And we've just made things harder. Interesting. Now, I'm going to pause the game for a minute because there are a couple of nice little features that um, Loki Striker has put onto the pause menu. First one that I like is drums only. It's um, it changes the music. That's like the music on the title screen, I think, isn't it? Drums only, or kind of drums and bass only. Nice, nice little touch. I like that. Um, I want the full music on though, because it's um, oops, wrong button. You can turn music off as well if you don't like the music. Don't know why you do that because the music in this game is um, really cool. I like the pulsing beat. It sounds really good. Uh, what have we got? Health regen. That's good, but I do want to kind of show you as much of the game as I can. So at some point, I am going to want to die. Um, let's upgrade lightning instead. Because that's fun. So yeah, let's load up another beacon there. Check out the developer, Loki Striker, over on Twitter. Um, they've made a couple of other games for Pico 8. Check them out, they are really cool. And looks like they're working on a really nice looking shmup. So I'm looking forward to seeing some more games from Loki Striker. 
very much. Uh, let's get, let's upgrade. I'm not sure what this one does. Plus 10% times 2 XP. That sounds like we get more XP. Not sure. There's a little pop up then, but it's a bit too fast for me to be able to read it, so I'm not entirely sure what it does. Also on here, we've got show stats. Um, this kind of lets you sort of see your build. Kind of like how Binding of Isaac does it. You can kind of see your um, upgrades that you picked up in Binding of Isaac in the same way. There you go. Shows you what attacks you've got, shows you how well you're doing. Um, if you've got some awesome build that you want to share with the world, that's the way to do it. So as you can see, we're getting harder enemies now. We need to start kiting a lot. I'm getting punished here for um, not upgrading one of my attacks and instead grading all of them to try and show you as much as I can. Um, you can play this with a mouse. I'll try. I'll show you playing it with the mouse for a little bit. Um, you could probably play it on touchscreen as well. Um, I'd give that a try. See what you think. What should we have? Size, armor. I've got eight armor. Do we need more armor maybe? Speed. Let's upgrade that attack. So you see, here we are playing um, with the mouse. I don't find this as easy as playing the c on a controller or the keyboard for that matter. But if this works with a touch um, touch interface, then you can play this game on your phone, which is a really nice way of playing Pico 8 games, I think you'll find. You've got a little kind of direction pad there showing you which way you're kind of holding. I'm going to go back to using the um, controller because um, then I've got a hand free to um, to gesticulate with. So, my best record on this game is about five minutes. So we're about one minute away from me getting wiped out by a massive horde of enemies. Um, let's upgrade the lightning skill because I think that's the best one. So yeah, I have a suspicion that the um, each character has a kind of unique attack because the lightning attack normally doesn't look like that. We'll be able to confirm this with a new character on a new game. Oh, we've got a lot harder enemies now and I'm not doing enough damage. Um, yeah, like I said, a lot of the skill in this game comes in picking the right upgrades and picking a good build from the um, kind of random upgrades that you give in each level up. Um, it's a very addictive game loop. Survi Vampire Survivors is a very addictive game. Some might say a little too addictive, um, but it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I haven't said enough about the graphics on this game. I really like the graphics in this game. I like the um, kind of the colour scheme. Um, enemies are kind of... I can't say that, um, yeah, there's not like a limited colour palette really, but there's like there's three or four colours for the enemies. The enemies are basically red, I'm blue, the background is dark blue, you know, that's a colour scheme that's been thought about. It gives the game a really striking look. Um, all the characters, they're very small sprites, but they're all nicely animated. That little red dot, that shows you where the nearest beacon is if you want to um, ramp your way through the game. Let's see if upgrading the damage will um, help my character. Plus 10 damage is a big increase. Let's see if that makes a difference. Uh, I think it is. Probably not enough of a difference because I am taking quite a bit of damage. <laughs> I should probably not try and set off any more beacons, should I? Yeah, the little bar at the top, that shows you um, your progress to the next level. Um, every level up is going to take a few more... Um, few more gems before you end level up so oh this is good I'm getting um I'm getting lucky here getting all the good lightning upgrades that I want this is good oh there's two beacons now I'll try let's see if I can do this one did that do it I think after a while the beacons expire I don't think I got that one then let's try and get the other one instead The um Oh, there's some those are new enemies. Oh my. <laughs> those yellow guys are fast. Wow. You know, this is further than I've ever been. Six and a half minutes. I think my best record prior to that was about five and something. 
breaking new ground here. Um, speed, yeah, speed would be good because these yellow guys are really fast. So if I can run away from them faster, the kiting can continue. Um, an optimal strategy in this game is to move anti-clockwise. Not really. I hope you don't come to the channel to listen to my um, my gaming advice. You're not going to get any. Not any useful advice anyway. All oh, these yellow guys are so tough. I need to be doing a lot more damage. This is not enough. More lightning? Yeah. I think lightning's my best um, damage output at the moment. So more lightning. Surely that's a good thing. The um, the lightning has a kind of um, splash damage to it, which you can start to see happening now. There's a kind of shock wave that comes out from it. It's a very satisfying skill to use. Oh god, these guys are so fast. So yeah, every enemy is really nicely animated. The graphics are just really nice. I mean, that shock wave. It's a sun, it's a circle effect, but there's there's probably some sort of fill pattern on there to kind of give it a more to give it a different look. It's a really nice looking game. This it's going to make screenshots very easy. Um, yeah, more radius on my lightning, please. Oh, oh my God, that's that must be the boss. <laughs> I've never got this far. I don't know what you do. Oh my God, it can fire fireballs. Oh no. <laughs> oh God. I'm not prepared for this. I, don't, I didn't know this was happening. I thought I'd just get wiped out like I normally do. Oh my god. That lightning skill is doing so much damage now. Oh, he's, he's doing a massive fireball attack. Um, I don't think upgrading the wand at this point is going to make a lot of difference, is it? Iframes will probably help me. I just need to survive. Hey, that's the title, that's the genre of the game, isn't it? I've just got to survive. Oh, that was a hit then. Oh, oh. I think my lightning skill's hitting him. It's like I'm fighting Satan. The end boss of the game. Oh my god. Ah! Oh. Wow. So there you go, that's the end boss. Didn't think I'd get there. 8 minutes 50, wow. Right, I'm going to show you one more game. Um, I'm probably not going to get that far, because I think you've probably seen enough of this game. You've probably made a decision as to whether you think this game is good or not. I think it is really good. I think you should go and check it out. Okay, I'm going to play a different character and hopefully show you how I think each character has like a unique version of the attacks, I think. Um, which one is the one that I was going to show you? Not Moonkin. Or is it Moonkin? I was Stormcore last time, wasn't I? Let's... I think it's Moonkin. Yeah. So if you look at Moonkin's attack, he's got these kind of orbiters that are kind of orbiting around him. Okay? Yeah? See how that works? Now, I'll get the falling star. That's convenient because... Look, the falling star, the lightning strike attack that I kept calling it, is different. Look, it's attacking further away. So there you go. Confirmed. Each character has a kind of unique spin on their starting weapon. That's interesting, isn't it? That adds a lot of depth to the game. Um, I mean, if we look at the wand attack, that's the same. That's the same as my last game, isn't it? If I start a new game... I think the apprentice, I think he has the wand. So let's see, how is his wand attack different? He's firing a lot faster. Ooh, the flame club. That's like you. That's like the garlic attack. Let's see if I can get that orbiting one. Show you how that's different. Where is it? It's not going to give me it now, is it? Astro Orbit, here we go, this is the one I was talking about. Look, it's different. So there you go, each character's got their own unique weapon. Nice detail. If you want to play this game, the link is 
That's not a BBS link, that's an itch link down below. Go and check out the game on itch. All the links are in the description. Follow Loki Striker on Twitter. Um, they're making some really cool games on Pico 8. Um, this, is, this is a really good game. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, go and follow them on Twitter for more um, fun Pico 8 goodness. And um, yeah, support the developer over on itch. Go and download the game. Go and buy the game. It's $2. I'm sure you can afford that. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, if you did, do all the YouTube things. But don't forget, check out these cool Pico 8 games. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again very soon.